Jeffrey, you have a new piece for the May issue of The Atlantic that you are debuting this morning, and the title is A Study in Senate Cowardice. And you write about your interview with former Republican Senator Rob Portman of Ohio at the Aspen Ideas Festival, and you specifically asked him about his vote to acquit Donald Trump in the second impeachment trial, and you write in part this. On stage, Portman reminded me of his comments on the night of the Capitol insurrection happened. I took to the Senate floor and gave an impassioned speech about democracy and the need to protect it. So that's who I am. But this is incorrect. This is not who he is. Portman showed the people of Ohio who he is five weeks later on February 13th when he voted to acquit Trump, the man he knew to have fomented a violent anti-democratic insurrection meant to overturn the results of a fair election. Portman then asked whether it asked if it would be a good idea for President Obama to be impeached by the new Republican Congress. He went on, well, he's a former president, and I think he should be out of reach. And Donald Trump was a former president. If you start that president, trust me, Republicans will do the same thing. They will. It was an interesting and also pathetic point to make. Portman was arguing that his Republican colleagues are so corrupt that they would impeach a president who had committed no impeachable offenses simply out of spite. So, um, Jeffrey, um, this is a, a tough piece. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an important reminder, though, about why we are where we are. Uh, the Senate could have, should have impeached Donald Trump for doing what they knew he did. They were there. They were at the scene of the crime. They spoke out against it. They spoke out against it in, in, in the most impassioned way. But then these senators, some of them who have been my good friends for 20, 25 years, did what I consider to be unthinkable. They voted to acquit Donald Trump. Um, and the question, Jeffrey, is why? Why would they acquit a guy that they know uh, uh, could have cost them their very lives and tried to foment an anti-democracy revolution. Right. I mean, the, the, the why is unknowable, uh, except to these folks in, in their hearts, but we have notions of why this happened. Um, fear, for one thing, I mean, literal fear of uh, the same sort of mob that attacked the Capitol, attacking them physically, right? Um, they were worried about their families. Um, probably a more, a broader explanation would simply be popularity. This is where the Republican Party was going. Um, these are elected Republican officials. They wanted to keep their jobs. They saw what happened to people who stepped out of line. They saw, you know, even just their own colleague Mitt Romney being scapegoated and excoriated within the, the, the Capitol simply for standing up for his principles. And, and so they decided that expediency, I mean, they found excuses not to vote for, you know, the, 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 we don't want to set a precedent. Well, you know, it was Donald Trump who set a precedent by not leaving office after he lost. That was the precedent that was set in, in early 2021. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, the, it's, the usual, uh, it, it's, the, it's the usual assortment of, of kind of lame excuses that keep people in their careers. I, that's, that's, that's my best explanation for it. So, Jeffrey, this is, seems to me a <laughs> fundamental question of our time because it's a reminder that didn't, we didn't have to be where we are right now. If enough people no. took principled stand doing what they knew was right, right. and doing recognizing what they knew was wrong, which is the attack on January 6th and that Donald Trump fomented that, yeah. Donald Trump may now just be an angry rich guy sitting on the patio at Mar-a-Lago lobbing true social posts into the right. night. <laughs> and it would have been relatively innocuous. But um, we talk a lot about Lindsey Graham on this show, who yeah. banged the lectern on the night of January 6th. I'm done. I'm out. I'm, Trump and I had yeah. a run, but it's over. He gets chased through the airport literally four days later through Reagan National Airport being called a traitor and flips. Yep. So that's the fear factor you're talking about. But that's Lindsey Graham. We understand who he is. But why didn't some of the others say, look, I liked some of Donald Trump's policies. He was a good president for one term, but we cannot go down this road. The, the interesting thing is that they did 
for, I mean, if you look at the statements of so many of these senators, all you needed was 10 more Republicans to join the six Republicans and the Democrats to, to vote to convict, right? If you look at so many of their statements, they were appalled by what happened. They were in shock by what happened. But then, as you, you know, time goes on. And three weeks later, look, Mitch McConnell could have ended this. That's right? the yeah. issue. It's, yeah, McConnell's right? Mitch, the guy. Mitch, right. McConnell, Mitch McConnell's the guy. But, but you know what? People like Rob Portman, very highly respected senator, very smart guy, very accomplished guy. If just if he had, had, had built up Mitch McConnell's backbone, if he and a, and a, and a handful of these, these folks had done that, you, you, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. But you know, Mitch McConnell is the key player, I mean, along with Kevin McCarthy and sort of going down to Mar-a-Lago. Right. But, but there is this moment, one, two, three weeks after January 6th, where 10 or 15 Republicans of high stature it's could have simply gotten together and said, you know what? Thank you for your service, Mr. President. Enjoy the golf. But we're, we're totally out. And we're doing this as a group. So, okay, we're going to get some crap. We're going to get excoriated. But we're going to spread out the risk. But they, right. they, they collapsed in the face of this fear. Uh, you know, Elise, they, they, they could have also, <laughs> they could have talked about the riots. They could have talked about the anti-democratic intent. They also could have been very Machiavellian about this as they went to other Republican senators and say, and said at that time, <coughs> not only did Donald Trump foment this, this, this revolt, this riot, but he's the first president since Herbert Hoover in one term to lose the White House, the Senate, and the House. This guy is bad news for us Republicans. If we, if we don't impeach him for the reason he should be impeached, he could come back and cause us to lose again in 21, which he did, 22, which he did, 23, which he did, and 24, which he will do. So, yes, they could have acted on principle. They also, if somebody had been, like, strong enough and tough enough, they could have also grabbed people and said, aren't you tired of losing? If this, Lindsey Graham, if this... Ted Cruz, if this, whomever else, fill in the blank, isn't enough for your, your moral conscience to be moved, then be Machiavellian about it. Let's stop losing. This guy is a loser. He won one election, and we lost. We got wiped out in 17. I could go down all, whether you're talking about Delaware County uh, in, in, in Pennsylvania, whether you're talking about the Virginia legislature, I mean, I could go down all of it in 17, 18, 19, 20. The guy just loses. So they could have made that argument as well if they weren't so scared of their own shadows. Joe, it just shows, though, how at that moment, three weeks after the insurrection, feelings were so raw, emotions were so raw, and Republicans, senators were angry that their workplace had just been the site of a huge riot and they had been in danger. And the tenor was, Trump is over, Trump is crushed, let's just move on, on the Republican side. And so you didn't have them stepping up and you had an overestimation of Trump being gone and Instead, he's, you know, like a spider that they thought they had smashed out and he was done, but he keeps growing his legs back. And so he's back stronger than ever. And it just really was a fundamental mistake to not have the 9-11 hearings immediately after when it's fresh in the memory, because we see what, you know, how the weakness of historical memory after, two, after three years and how the conspiracy theory set in. Claire, the off lead to Jeffrey's piece on cowardice is fear. And the fear still exists out there. And some of your colleagues, former colleagues in the Senate, still seem wrapped up in this rope of fear that binds them to Donald Trump. Why is that? Why is it so deep? Why is it so lasting? Well, I would disagree that it is as much fear for themselves and their families as it is fear of not having political power. Um, I think this whole exercise is um, exhibit A of how people's desire for power overcomes their integrity, overcomes their character. Uh, you know, Mitch McConnell thinks his legacy is going to be the Supreme Court. I would tell you, I believe his legacy will be his failure to lead at the most critical juncture in American history 
That is, are we going to go down the road where presidents are going to try to use violence to fight the will of the voters? Or are we not? And mm -hmm. if you look at what happened, I mean, I know all these people. I know many of them very well. And they can't stand this guy. They know how bad he is. And if you remember, Mitch McConnell likes to brag about how well he knows politics. He gave a speech on the floor, I know my politics. Well, he misjudged his politics here because what he believed is that Trump under a Joe Biden administration would quick, quickly go to prison. He believed that the criminal justice system would do its job in a way that would minimize the possibility of Donald Trump coming back. Well, he misjudged that. We can talk about Merrick Garland and him dragging his feet. We can talk about all kinds of issues, but that didn't happen. And now you see this continued cowardice. And by the way, Rob Partman wasn't even running again. I mean, give me a break. I mean, when he, when he like crumbled about free trade, I knew trouble was afoot. And I know Rob well, I worked with him on many, many things. But this is really, really, I think, um, I think Jeffrey's article is so spot on about the lack of courage. You know, we have Profiles in Courage Award at the Kennedy Center every year. Mm -hmm. They should have a new award for a profile in cowardice. And the Senate, the Republican Senate caucus should be the first recipient of that award. A lengthy list of nominees for that prize, no doubt. Hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.